Marketing Manager here with Streetwave. Uh, we would like to welcome you to our webinar here with Grandstream Networks. Our presenter today is Ernesto, and he is the North America Support Manager with Grandstream. Um, during the presentation, if there are any questions you would like to ask, please send them through the question box, and I will have Ernesto address them at the end. This webinar will also be recorded for your reference. So without any further ado, Ernesto, so the floor is all yours. Thank you, Angela. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, I'm here joining uh, with Greg Roberts, uh, one of our sales representatives from Grandstream Networks. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Roberts. I am the uh, I work for Grandstream. I'm the account manager for Streakwave, and uh, you can use me as an added resource. Uh, for any product info that you may need or have questions on, as well as if you're having problems with our tech support, please feel free to reach out to me. I believe my contact info may be shared at the end of this presentation, but if not, uh, my email is Gregory, G-R-E-G-O-R-Y, dot Roberts at grandstream.com. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so we're ready. Today our webinar is gonna be about our recently launched access point, GWN series. It's gonna be uh, we have a three, three different type of models, the GWN 7600, 7610, and the 76 LR. So let's get started. And as Angela mentioned, any questions you may have, you can use the chat panel, or at the end of my presentation, we can, I'm going to have a Q&A section. So bear with me. Of course, my, all right. So first of all, I'm going to I'm going to talk about I'm going to uh, be giving a small introduction of the GWN series. Then we're going to be talking about installations and deployment and most important, the application feature, features of both the GWN 7600 um, access point and the long range. And of course, the upcoming new features. Uh, keep an eye on our website. We're going to be launching a new firmware within the next couple of weeks. That new firmware is going to introduce uh, much more features. I'm going to explain that at the end of my presentation. So this is what Grandstream has at the moment. Uh, three models for access points and one model for our NAT router, GWN 7000. Obviously, we're trying to cover the indoors and outdoor with a powerful wireless access point with tremendous Wi-Fi coverage. So you're going to notice that the coverage um, the range and the uh, Wi-Fi simultaneously client that we support are one of the highlights of Grandstream networking product. All of them are a gigabit VPN. Uh, I'm sorry, my router has a gigabit VPN with high performance. Also, uh, it's integrated with controller and centralized management through a single interface. So we try to make all these nice features easy to access, easy to control, from one web interface. Let's get started with the access point GWN 7610. Let me go back a little bit quickly. So um, uh, the presentation is gonna be starting from left to right, GWN 7610. Then I'm gonna go over the GWN 7600. And then lastly, uh, the long range 7600LR. And a brief spec for our GWN 7000 router. Now, uh, the 7610 is an access point that supports, you can support up to 250 plus Wi-Fi client devices at the same time. The throughput of this access point is 1.75 gigabit per second, and it, it comes with two gigabit wireline ports. So you can, one is, uh, one support PoE, so then you can power the device, with your PoE injector or PoE switch. And then you have a secondary port where you can concatenate, for example, another access point or maybe connecting your own computer for troubleshooting. Our access point, this model in particular, support up to 175 meters coverage. That's a superior range in the market. Some other vendors, they use um, 150 to 170 meters. Uh, we try to have a higher coverage to um, highlight these particular access points. Obviously, it comes with a dual band antenna. We support 2.4, 5 gigs. And this particular model supports 
a three by three MIMO technology antenna that will give you more uh, simultaneous sessions at the same time. For Wi-Fi security, we support the advanced features, including web WPA, WPA2, and of course, WPA2 Enterprise. Our access point offers simultaneously dual band Wi-Fi signal. So as I said, we support both bands and you can create an SSID by using both bands simultaneously, depending on your client's deployment. Last but not least, uh, all Grand Stream access points, including the router, they come with a controller-less feature. That is an important feature that you don't need a third-party uh, hardware or another computer running a controller software. The controller is embedded into the access point or even the router, whatever you choose to enable the, access, the controller. For example, if you are using the controller feature on this particular model, then you can control up to 50 more GWN access points. Now let's move on to the next model, which is a little smaller. We call it GWN7600. This one in particular supports up to 450 Wi-Fi clients. The throughput is a little less, 125 GPBS. Also support two gigabit wireline ports. And the range is a little smaller. Um, the smaller, I'm sorry, the range is 165 meters coverage dual band at the same time with two by two antenna with multi-user MIMO technology. Same uh, rich advanced features, Wi-Fi security features, uh, for example, WEP, WPA, and WPA2 Enterprise. Same um, offers, obviously, uh, the same simultaneously dual band on each Wi-Fi signal. And then, uh, similar to the other model, 7610, this one also has or supports a controller uh, feature. Uh, this is a device that is a little smaller. Uh, it's good for a small, small environment, uh, residential, for example. And uh, if you want to enable the controller on this particular device, then you can add up to 30 GWN access points. Our third access point model is the GWN 7600LR. The long range access point supports a little more clients, a 450 Wi-Fi client. Throughput is about the same as the previous one, 1.27 Gbps. And the coverage, of course, it's uh, much longer. It's a 300 meters coverage. Dual band is the same. The advanced Wi-Fi security are also the same. And uh, you can also enable the controller on this particular device. If you want to use it on, on the controller on the, on the long range, then you can have or add up to 30 GWN access points. So ha by having said that, this is a small a short summary of all the features that these three models support. Obviously, all of them support the same 802.11, ABG, and AC with the exception of the 7600 that they are a Wave 2 device. The antennas for the 7610 is a 3x3 three three antenna with 2.4 and 5 gigs gain. And the 7600 uh, devices, they have, have uh, the same 2x2 two two antenna with both bands. So this is a short summary. The only one that I want to highlight is obviously the coverage range, which is between 175 meters and 165 and 300 meters. And um, I believe the next one, uh, SSIDs, you can have up to 16 SSIDs per controller and the concurrent client between 250 and 450 clients. All right. Lastly, let me show you a, a, a small sneak peek about the Grand Stream router. Model number is GWN7000. Uh, it comes with seven gigabit ports, two as a one, five as, as a LAN. One of the LAN ports works as a PoE, so you can power the router 
by using your PoE switch. And it's embedded with a master controller that you can control up to 300 GWN access points. So as you can tell that this device has a little more, more horsepower. So if you eventually want to use access, grand stream access point and the router, then I highly recommend you to move the controller to the router where you can have more access points. Obviously a centralized web interface. It comes with rich uh, firewall features, including NAT, DMZ, port forwarding, um, SPI, and, and plug and, and UPnP, and peripheral support through USB port. Eventually, we're going to add an option that you can include a third one by using a USB LTE dongle. Now, let's go back to the access points. On any model, um, the, the first thing you have to do in order to install it is take it out of the box, connect it to your network. And by the way, by using a grand stream access point, you can use it on an existing network. You may have your existing network with your own router, with your own switches equipment, and just add the access point by using the grand stream product. So when you connect it to your existing network, the only thing you need to do, I mean, the access point is using a DHCP uh, client option. So obviously it's requesting for an IP address. Um, if you don't have, it's not, it's not that easy for for you to find out the IP address, then you can basically follow the instructions that I'm saying here. Number one is by finding or locating the MAC address of your device, open up your browser, and then enter the string shown on the screen, HTTPS, GWN underscore, the MAC address, that local, hit enter, and then you can access that particular device web interface right away. Another option is you can go to grandstream.com and download a free Windows-based software. We call it GWN Discovery Tool. Basically, you select your interface, click on Start, and then it's going to start scanning the network for Grandstream devices only. And obviously, you're going to see, you're going to find your devices, IP address, and a small uh, link that says Manage Device. When you click there, your browser is going to do default browser is going to pop up. So once you have the web interface, uh, default password is admin admin. Um, the first thing you have to do is when you log in, there is um, uh, a warning message reminding you to change the password. As a matter of fact, in the latest firmware, you must change your admin password the first time that you log in. So you log in by typing admin admin and then you're ready to configure your access point. Today, I'm not gonna explain you know, all the settings, how to configure it. I'm gonna briefly show you what you can do or what you can accomplish with any grand stream access point. Um, so um, as an example, there's a diagram right here. By utilizing only one access point, you can have multiple network groups. As an example, you can have two different network groups on there's one network group. You can even have multiple SSIDs. So um, a typical example is that you may have your company network and the guest network. So on their guest network, you have a different SSID, and then you can configure your SSIDs with the more specific settings that I'm going to be showing you today. One thing that we make it, we try to make it super easy for you to have a plug and play, let's say. So if you take an access point out of the box, connect it to the network, you don't even need to log in and configure SSIDs. There is going to be an SSID ready to use. The SSID and name is basically GWN and the last six digits of the MAC address of your access point. And the um, Wi-Fi password is kind of written, it's written already in the access point label. If you, if you turn up, if you turn your access point, you're going to see a label where you can see the MAC, MAC number, serial number, and at the very bottom, kind of right corner, uh, you're going to see the SSID that I'm showing today. And right below on the left, you have the Wi Fi password. This is for an easy install in case you don't want to do anything. You don't want to configure it out of the box. You can have an SSID ready to go. 
But of course, if you want to make it a little more complex, more secure, then you need to access to it and then making the proper changes as you want. Continuing with installations and deployment, uh, this is another, another, another example that you may have multiple access points. So the way that it works is as soon as you connect the first access point, I'm sorry, if you have multiple access points, just connect one only uh, first. So when you connect that one, that particular GWN is going to become the master of your, um, in other words, the controller is going to be enabled into that particular device. So you log into it. Once you log in, then that access point knows or recognizes that you want it to be the, the master controller. And then as you connect the second and third and other access points, they're going to be communicating with the master GWN in that way you can manage all your GWN from the master. Um, this is a little example. When you log into the master GWN, you go to the access point menu, top right corner, you're going to see a button that says discovery, discover AP. When you click on there, on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that all your access points are going to show up right away. Um, at the last, last column on the right, you have the action buttons. You simply click on, on that. And then if you look at the left-hand side uh, screenshot, all your access points are going to start showing there. So basically, this is the way to include access point under the controller feature. Now, once you have the controller embedded, these are the multiple things that you can accomplish. So 7,000 and 7,600, they can act as the controller, as I said before, for any GWN Wi-Fi access points. Number two is that the main features that you can accomplish are out of discovery, pairing devices, you can even provision. So any setting that you can push to all your access points, you do it from the master GWN. Uh, you can manage, obviously, your Wi-Fi networks, settings, you can manage your groups and SSIDs. You can manage your client and even the master. You can manage your master failover. So, for example, if the master GWN, you know, um, gets unplugged or crashes or it's out of power for some reason, then we highly recommend to configure what we call the master failover, where you can assign any other access point in the network to be working as a failover and then that particular device is going to be pinging or communicating with the master every few seconds. And, when, and then when the master is not available, the failover takes over. This is the option that I showed you before. This is where this is how you add access point to your controller devices list. Uh, basically, embedded controller, you discover it, then you do the pairing, and then provisioning. Three simple steps. Now, if you want to use a grand stream uh, router, the GWN7000, and then you want to move the controller into that router, you can accomplish the same thing. You can have multiple network groups. You can have multiple SSIDs. And then you can allocate different SSIDs under different network groups or one SSID to different network groups. This is a small example. Um, Basically, you, you have the option to manage your client. For troubleshooting, for example, we have seen that many times. Sometimes you want to identify a particular client that is uh, utilizing more bandwidth resources, for example. Um, there's a particular employee which computer is not getting the best signal. So I highly recommend to go to the dashboard, identify the client, if you click on the right-hand side, there's an edit button that you can even enter a name to that particular IP address or MAC address. So eventually, in the future, you can identify the client more uh, easily. In the example, you can see that probably from the half bottom, you, I have in, enabled the, the name or host name of the client, so I know who they are. By the way, 
say, you can do the same thing for the access points. So eventually when you are troubleshooting access points, you know, okay, this is my AP that is on the main lobby, for example, and then you can enter a name. So then you can identify the AP in the future. Because uh, typically in a network environment, you ended up having installing more than three access points. In the client dashboard, you can see not only the MAC address, the host name, as I mentioned, the connection type, if it's wired or wireless, the radio channel, if it's wireless, the throughput, and the aggregated usage. Uh, I explained a little bit about the master failover. So this is something that you need to do during your installation. You can identify a secondary access point to be um, to work as the failover, meaning that when the primary master goes down, then the secondary is going to take effect right away. Uh, but in the meantime, that failover um, access point is going to continue working as another slave access point. It's super easy to configure. Just go to the web interface, go to the access point page, click on the failover button, and then select what access point you want to use as the master failover. You click save and apply, and that's it. Two clicks only, three clicks, and then you have a failover, master failover feature enabled within a few clicks. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the application features, what you can accomplish, what you can do with the Grand Stream access points. Some of the features are highlighted here. Obviously, we support so many other features, but one of, one of the features that I highly recommend you are monitoring, the, monitor, monitoring and reporting uh, the band steering, client isolation, client bridging, security, captive portals. So well, let me go over one by one to give you an idea how each one works. So for monitoring and reporting overview, as soon as you log into the master access point, you're gonna go to the dashboard or the overview page where you can you have full control of the whole network. You can see how many access points are discovered online or even offline. You can see how many clients are registered to your access point. And most important for, for troubleshooting, you can see the channel distribution table. So you can see what channels are being used. Uh, I was saying for troubleshooting, depending, some, you may have some customer or clients reporting some issues that then by you identifying, doing some Wi-Fi uh, survey, you notice that there is a particular channel that is being used by your neighbor um, uh, access point, for example. So by doing that, then you don't want to use a particular channel. You can go to the master access point and um, instead of using an auto selecting selective channel, then you can specif specify what channel to use. But obviously in an auto mode, we're using the typical channels that are not overlapping for 2.4, R1, 6, and 11. And for five gigs, um, I believe it's 36, 44, and 167. Now the, at the bottom then you have, you can see how many, what are your top APs based on usage. Again, if you name, if you enter a host name to the access point, then you can see that name right here. Uh, main lobby, you know, uh, the accounting area or something like that, then you can identify quickly the access point that is using more throughput. On the next section, you can see the top SSIDs. Same thing for troubleshooting. You want to know what SSIDs more um, use, specifically about usage and throughput. And then bottom left, you have the top client. Same thing. Eventually, you may you would like to know what particular client is using is, is um, uh, download and, and uploads um, bandwidth is consuming more. So then you can. Uh, allocate uh, resources to minimize that usage to that particular client. That's another feature that support that is supported on the Grand Stream Network product that you can allocate bandwidth per client. Continuing with the monitoring and reporting, 
Um, you can see the status, obviously, per client. You can see the status um, per um, um, EWN or access point. So you can see them, obviously, the MAC address, the part number, the firmware version, which is important, um, and the IP address, uptime, you know, all the typical stats that you need to know to check the health of your network. And lastly, for monitoring and reporting, email notifications. So you as an administrator, you would like to know or get notified when something happening on your network. For it, you can enable some of the action um, event list. One of them, for example, mem memory usage, CPU usage, firmware upgrade. When any of these um, behaviors or uh, when you know when the system notices some changes to the CPU usage, for example, then the, UC, the DWN can send you an email um, to notify you of that particular event. Moving to the next uh, feature or application feature, it's band steer steering. So obviously, as a dual band device for troubleshooting, sometimes you prefer to steer up the a particular band depending on your client uh, distribution. You may have legacy computers or, or, or legacy um, Wi-Fi clients that they support 2.4 only, as an example. And you have just a few only that support dual band uh, Wi-Fi clients. So in order to reserve a band or a throughput for that particular group of legacy devices, then you can probably steer the band for those devices that are dual band as an example you can by the way you can steer you can do a band steering towards 2.4 or towards 5 gigs or you can even let the dwn do a auto balance depending on how many clients it has application feature client isolation this is another one that you can enable on your dwn Basically, that's a good option that you can you want to enable when creating a guest network uh, or, or guest SSID. So you want to continue using the same network group um, for your um, office data employees, for example, and at the same time using the same network for guest users. But these users connecting through that particular guest SSID, you don't want them to kind of um, check around all the devices in your production network, for example, logging into other phones, IP phones in your network, you don't want that. So then you can enable the first option, we call it internet mode. When you turn that on, then only devices connected through this particular SSID will have access to the internet only. We have a second option, we call it gateway, gateway Mac and the radio mode. The gateway Mac is basically when you want the wireless clients that communicate with the gateway only. Then in that case, the communication between the client is blocked and they cannot access any of the management services of the same GWN access point. And the last one is the radio mode, which is a wireless client that can access to the internet services, GWN router and the access points GWN, but they cannot communicate with each other. So I think this is a better if you can see that, uh, this is an internet mode. You have your Wi-Fi wi -Fi devices that they will have access to the internet only when internet mode is enabled. Radio mode, for example, when you enable this option, they can connect to anything, to the GWN, to your router, go to the internet, but they cannot connect to other Wi-Fi devices. And lastly, the gateway mode by using the Mac, um, then obviously they can connect to everything, internet, GWN, your router, sorry, they cannot connect to the access point and they cannot connect to other Wi-Fi devices. So we support these three options to cover most of the requests. And the last application feature, um, actually I have more, is the client bridge. So client bridge option, we call it um, client bridge, but it's also typically called in the um, industry as mesh networks. By enabling the client bridge, then you can create a mesh network. For example, it's super easy. In the web UI, 
you can see um, down here that when you identify your GWN, there is a, um, um, an, an action button, I believe is the third one, almost last, that when you click it, then that particular GWN is going to be working as a client bridge. Basically, as, a, as the diagram is, is showing, you can have a GWN connected to a wired network, and then you can have a remote access point that is not connected to a wired network, but the network connectivity is coming from Wi-Fi. So the client bridge is, yes, it's a Wi-Fi bridge. Same um, logic applies to mesh networks. Sometimes people may have um, offices or deployment where they want to have Wi-Fi only during office hours or during a certain time during the day. So the GWN series, they support a Wi-Fi scheduler that you can turn on or turn off the Wi-Fi during a particular time condition. This is the menu where you enable that. Basically, you can enable the date, time, start time, and the end time. LED scheduler, same thing. Sometimes you may have a GWN up in the ceiling at night. You know, it's all the LEDs are blinking, and you don't want that type of um, light to be affecting probably a surveillance camera that is triggering emotion detection, um, or simply you just want to save energy then you can enable the LED scheduler to turn off the LEDs at a certain time of the day. Bandwidth management, also the GWN support this option that you can manage the bandwidth per multiple components. For example, you can allow to limit the bandwidth for wired and wireless users upstream and downstream. You can limit the bandwidth utilization per SSID, also per MAC or even IP address. If you want to limit the bandwidth per SSID, then you need to go to the network groups, click on add, edit, and Wi-Fi. And then you have that option that you can select what type of bandwidth you want to allocate to that particular SSID. If it's per client, then remember you can navigate to the client section, identify the client, click on edit, and then there's a menu where you can enter the bandwidth up and downstream for that particular client. Um, roaming is it's one of the issues that most of the access points or basically Wi-Fi IP phones are having today. If you're using a Wi-Fi IP phone, obviously it's utilizing your Wi-Fi infrastructure. Sometimes you want to have a good roaming capability so people can roam from one area to another one without losing connectivity, without losing registration, and obviously without losing the, the call itself. Um, the roaming is a, is a capability or a feature on the client side. So depending on what client, if it's a laptop, for example, if you're moving from one area, one zone of the building to another one, you may be losing connectivity by doing this type of roaming. But again, everything depends on the Wi-Fi client, the hardware, the computer, or the, or the Wi-Fi IP phone. However, Grandstream is working on um, helping out the client to alleviate or to overcome these type of uh, roaming typical issues by utilizing three particular protocols. Uh, the, all the GWNs, they support the RSSI, MPK, and Enterprise Voice. Um, so only a couple of those, you need to enable it depending on your Wi-Fi client. If they support those protocols, then you need to go to the options in the GWN and enable those, those settings. So let me show you. For RSSI, minimum uh, receive signal strength indication. So basically, there's a setting. If you go to the SSID, go to the Wi-Fi menu, and then at the bottom, it says enable RSSI. I think it's not enabled by default. You need to turn that on, and obviously, you need to have 
client that support that protocol. Basically, that protocol helps telling the the um, the access point what is the the this um, the strength sorry between the client and the GWN or the access point. And based on that, the client can comp compute the distance or when it's okay to move or hop into the next access point. The next one is called uh, PMK. This one is an option that, that is automatically enabled in the GWN. You don't need to do anything. It's basically the PMK is catching, it, it, when it's enabled, it's, sorry, it's enabled by default. Um, when the client roaming back to the previous AP, then the 802.x authentication will not be required. And lastly, the enterprise voice 802.11 RKV. This is an enterprise voice that has shorter scan time and that omits the four-way handshake, which reduces considerable the roaming time and reduces the packet loss. So that's a setting that you need to enable on the same setting, by the way, go to the, your SSID, click on Wi-Fi, and that option is right below the RSSI. GWN series, they are uh, a good option for customer who requires captive portals. We do with authentication and without authentication. Sort of like, um, like um, in case you don't want authentication, then you basically, when providing SSID or Wi-Fi to your client, when they log into your uh, Wi-Fi uh, network, you know, the browser is gonna pop up and a web page is gonna, is gonna load right away. So you can customize that web page. Yeah, as an example, you can see here that it's a simple web page that has a Grand Stream logo. It has a connect button and a little checkbox that they, the, the, the user needs to check. When they click on the connect, then they're gonna gain access to the internet. Typically, um, you need to customize that page with the company logo, with uh, this, um, maybe a Wi-Fi disclaimer that you want, you want to let the customer know that you know that network is going to be used for um, uh, any any disclaimer that you have available. But you can also make it uh, by using authentication. So the GWNs, you can configure it to authenticate with a radius authentication server. Then the captive portal is gonna have a user and password. User is gonna enter that information. The GWN is gonna check or authenticate that with the radio server. And if approved, then the user is gonna gain internet access. Um, we also added an option we call a Facebook authentication that if, as of today, it's only supported by the GWN 7600 and the 7600 LR. By the next framework release, it's going to be supported on the 7610. So when you enable this, obviously the Facebook authentication is going to pop up. The user enter his credential, Facebook credentials, and he will gain internet access. Captive portal connects to your GWN. Um, you basically connect to your web interface. Second step, you go to the captive portal policies. You choose the authentication type, meaning no authentication, radios, Facebook, Facebook. And lastly, you choose the, the customizable landing page that will be shown once the client tries to connect to your network. So even with authentication, you can enter uh, the company's website, for example. So when people log in, you know, the company website is gonna show up. This is how you customize your captive portal. You have full access to all the files, HTML. Uh, you have an option that you can add more folders in case you have a complex website and you want to include pictures and even videos. You have full control of that, what to customize, what to include in that particular captive portal page. There's an option that you can see what clients are connected through the captive portal. And even there's going to be an option that you can remove or disconnect a particular client. For security, we have a, nice, a, a couple of nice options that I want to show you today. 
you can do, for example, uh, security certificate per device. So each Grandstream GWN comes with a particular certificate. So at the moment of provisioning, the device is already authenticated with a unique X509 security protocol. So the 509 certificate contains the device MAC address as the CN. Another security option that I wanted to highlight is the firmware. So the firmware is protected against any hacking via any combination of encryption and a digital signature. So someone trying to tamper the firmware is going to be uh, blocked if one of these keys are not are, are broken or detected. The firmware file, for example, is encrypted so that the hacker cannot get inside and, and retrieve information, what is in the firmware and what is running on the device by typing the reverse engineering the firmware image. So in that way, sometimes people can get into the firmware, do some reverse engineering, and then get access to the unit. And another one for security, we call it secure boot and runtime protection. So during the boot time is one of the times that is the device is more vulnerable for hacking. So we also added some protection during the boot time. Uh, for Wi-Fi encryption, we use the, the common advanced Wi-Fi encryption, for example, WPA2 plus AES. This is the one that is more strong that we recommended using. Uh, WPA with AES is the recommended option. WEP and WPA are not secure and should not be used. Even though we support it, we recommend you not to use this Wi-Fi encryption uh, method. And lastly, we're getting close to the last one for GWN security. So as I uh, showed you before, each device has its unique default SSID. Each device has a RG random string as the default Wi-Fi password. So it's a random generated password. And users are forced to change the web UI default password on the first login. Now, the GWN series also brings um, some tools to help you doing some maintenance and troubleshooting. Uh, for example, remote or local provisioning upgrades. So you can provision on not only one device, but multiple devices from the master controller. This can be done via HTTP, TFTP, or HTTPS. You can even schedule an upgrade and provisioning. You can conf you, uh, the config files are encrypted, and the encrypted firmware, remember, comes with a unique certificate. Uh, for troubleshooting, uh, the devices come with a syslog and, cap and packet capture. Uh, one of the unique options of Gramstream, by the way, is that you can turn, you can enable one of the GWNs to act as a centralized syslog server. So now you don't need to connect a lot, another computer, enable syslog, and then point in your devices to that particular server. Now you can do this from the same GWN. Just turn that option on, and the, the, uh, the troubleshot devices point them to the IP address of your GWN. So then all the logs are sent there, and then you can come, you can come back to the web UI of the GWN and download the syslogs. Obviously, you have option to do ping and trace route to confirm the network connectivity between your GWN and remote servers. For core files, sometimes if the device, um, I mean, the GWN can generate and store a core file when the system crashes. They, they can be fa found um, from, by logging into the web interface. You can download it from the web UI and you can clean the core files menu also from the web UI. So I hope that I cover most of the features that the GWN series supported uh, as of today. As I said at the beginning, a uh, new firmware is coming. Uh, keep an eye on, on our website. Check on the Streetwave website. Um, we have also a promo code to announce for those people who are interested in buying a GWN 7610, just log into Streetwave website, um, select your product. When you go to checkout, 
click uh, enter the promo code free seven six ten and before I wrap it up and go to the Q&A section, I just want to show you some of the features that are coming in the next framework release. The first one, for example, is that um, the net port, one of the LAN ports, we call a net port, can be now be used as a WAN port. So eventually the router can have three WAN ports. Uh, second option is that in the captive portal with radio server, now we're gonna, out, we're gonna support voucher and social login for the 7610, remember that it's still not available. Uh, we're working on the Linkify support. This is a location within a Wi-Fi network, similar to the GPS that we typically are used to use on our daily um, task when you're driving. Now you can do the same thing within a Wi-Fi network by utilizing application or services like Link Linkify. Um, eventually we're gonna support, in the next framework, sorry, we're gonna support GRE, so we are gonna support GRE. Uh, BGP, RIP, and OSPF as all the routing protocols. This is for the router GWN 7000. Um, we're going to have an option to update the access point firmware sequentially. So let's say that there's a new firmware and you have an installation of 30, 40 access points. Then you can click and then this, the, the controller is going to start upgrading each access point sequentially so you maintain your Wi-Fi network. We're gonna be supporting or adding an option called Airtime Fairness. So this, uh, this one is a uh, grand stream is doing a lot of effort. Uh, basically, we are gonna give an equal amount of airtime to fast devices. Faster devices will receive faster throughput. Slow devices, slow throughput. And lastly, uh, Sony Mesh support for the 7600 and 7600 LR. Uh, so this is already supported. Uh, let me rephrase that, my, my bad. Uh, mesh is already supported on the 7610. Um, so we're gonna be supporting it in the 7600 and the LR. All right, so I uh, believe I cover uh, all the features, I hope that I, we have, I mean, you can check our Grandstream website, download the specs, and you can see all the features that the GWN support, uh, series support as of today. You can always reach out to Streetwave uh, with your sales rep to give you more details about the product. Again, when you're buying a GWN 7610 through the Streetwave website, make sure entering the promo code 37610. Now I'm gonna turn it up to you, Angela, so you can help me with the questions and answer. Yes, thank you, Ernesto. Um, if there's any questions, um, now is the time to put them in the question box. Um, I do have one question, and it's probably already been covered, but we'll go ahead and ask it anyway. Um, does the GWN 7000 support open VPN, client or server? Yes, that's a good question, and it supports both client and server too. Okay, perfect. Um, looks like we have time for a few more. Um, there's another question. Is the GWN 7600LR antenna directional or omnidirectional? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. It's omnidirectional. Keep an eye, all the access points, they support the same technology as omnidirectional. Perfect. Um, let me see here. When running controller on the AP and setting a second one as a backup master, what is the turnaround time for the backup one to become the master when the original master goes down? So based on our internal testing, it takes up between 15 and 30 seconds to be available the, the to, for the failover to take place. However, during that time, it's very difficult to find a particular Wi-Fi client that is renewing the IP. So in other words, even that the master, the failover is gonna take place within 15 to 30 seconds, most likely all the devices that are connected to the, let's call it slave access point, they're gonna continue uh, without any um, uh, drop in the network. But 
in case uh, there is a particular device that is indeed connected to the master, then yes, it's going to take about 15 and 30 seconds for that to happen. Okay, perfect. Another question just came in. Um, is there any citywide hotspot currently implemented with these APs? Um, I don't, I'm not too sure about that question. Probably we can uh, take that off the air. Okay, we'll um, send a message to the question that got sent and then we'll address that separately. Um, I don't Great. see any other more questions coming through. Um, so it looks like, um, Ernesto, if you have anything else to add on, um, please do so now. Well, if not, um, I'll first meeting. Okay. Yeah, eventually, if you are testing a product, and, and by the way, as I said before, three way is uh, giving out a couple of free units. So uh, if you have any questions during the testing uh, stage, please feel free to open a support ticket with GrantStream. Uh, we're going to help you answering any questions or any troubleshooting. Remember, the promo code is free, F-R-E-E, -E, 7610. Perfect. Thank you all for attending, and Ernesto, thank you for presenting. You all have a great day. Thank you all. Bye now.